Yes, that that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it, man. Doing it. We are doing it. Yes, we are live here with Acceleration Fitness Podcast number two for For 2018. And today we have a very, very special guest. He's gonna introduce himself because I can't do him justice. But first, we got John Pat. John, how's the week? It's great, man. How's your week? Week's freaking phenomenal, man. Phenomenal week. We sold out the challenge in three hours this past week. What challenge you guys have? Body transmission challenge, man going down i need some of that uh, <laughs> yeah. but i'm gonna try and introduce this guy but I, again i don't think i'll do justice you've probably heard of this before flannel mouth i put it getting right there uh blake's hard cider so this is andrew blake andrew and i grew up together in armada michigan andrew since then went to michigan state and i'll never forget it i don't know if you remember this i tell people story all the time i'm at michigan state we're by the bus station it's like a nice day out i, I run into andrew like hey how you doing blah 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 and I'm like, so I don't know how we got on this topic, but you're like, you know, what are you going to do when you graduate? And I asked you that. And you're like, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to try some, like, some hard cider stuff and, like, see how it goes. And I'm like, boom. Yeah. Two years later, in every single store, I'm seeing Blake's hard cider. Blake's like, oh, it's phenomenal. He's- yeah, man. It's been wild. And one time I'll remember is you were doing, uh, I think, your wrestling photos. And you had this really sweet looking, like, cream color suit on. I don't know yeah, if you remember yeah, that. Yeah. And I was like, I remember looking at it. I was like, damn, that's a nice suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the hard side of things been going good, man. We're in uh, 17 states. Um, actually, we're in 15, soon to be 17 at the end of February. Um, so lots of travel, um, but things are good. I think we're the eighth largest craft hard cider company in the country wow, right now. Really? Yeah. So and how things, old are you guys? Just the cider? Uh, then? Yeah, just the cider part of it. Uh, the family farm's been around since 1946, but um, the hard cider part uh, we started. My dad, my cousin, my uncle, and myself. Uh, started in 2013. Okay, wow. So it's been kind of a quick uh, evolution. Um, been uh, been a wild ride, a lot of travel. So that's why I'm here to. Uh, I got engaged this past year wow. and looking, yeah, looking to get my ass back in shape. I've been drinking <laughs> probably like one too many of these flannel mouths. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, man, excited to uh, to come check out your spot. I've been following what you guys have been doing, and I mean the place is awesome. Yes, and so we're, uh, we're pumped to get him back in shape. Yeah, we're gonna give it. We're gonna, shape, we're gonna give it. We're gonna give it a go. I ran a marathon, and I uh, this past October, and I had a goal of like four hours, uh, ended up like you know four and a half, which is like that's kind of yeah, like that's, that's, that's kind of old man. Uh, hey, that's, that's still a marathon. That's all right. Yeah, people can. Yeah, say but that. but what I realized is like diets, like you know basically 80 percent of it because i ran a marathon and i just ate like shit all the time it's mm-hmm. like yeah i'm running you know pizza <laughs> beer or whatever it doesn't work that way at least when you're like getting looking down the barrel of 30 and you know, then when yeah. you're done you're like okay i need something else yeah exactly that's why i gave you a call yes so you gave me a call we got him in and now it's going down but for this podcast guys and all the podcasts we do we're gonna ask ask andrew some simple questions and see his response so question number one what is the book or book you've given most as a gift and why? Or what are one of the books that you highly recommend? Um, both by Joseph Campbell, my favorite author. Um, uh, the Art of Living by Joseph Campbell and Myths to Live By. I've never heard any of these. Okay, yeah, they're awesome. Check them out. They basically, three years ago, I kind of ran across them. Um, it's kind of weird how books come into your life and then you're kind of like, I don't know how I live my life I didn't ha- if I didn't run across kind of some yeah. of those messages. Mm-hmm. And uh, Anyways, yeah, anyone who hasn't read him, check him out. Um, he's a wonderful um, religious scholar and, um, and theologian and awesome books. So, so Art so, of Living? Art of Living, yeah. So it doesn't get into like any woo-woo stuff or anything like that, but it's just a, a real practical approach to like looking at life. How did it change you? Uh, gave me just an a interesting perspective on kind of the, the – the journey of life, you know, there, he basically was a big founder of the hero's journey, mm-hmm. kind of when you pick a goal, kind of how, you know, you go into the, like, kind of the unknown, you come out and you, you pull out kind of through that, you kind of transform and transform your life and come out with you know, an under, a greater understanding. So um, if you get a chance, read it. It's an easy, it's not a hard read. It's my next uh, book, man. I've yeah. never heard Joseph Campbell. Check it out. I'll, br- I'll bring it next time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I always, it's been the one thing, uh, school-wise, um, was never kind of inclined as, as far as classes go, but I was always like a self-learner, uh, so I've always been a, like a vicious reader um, on my own, and I've continued that. It's probably like my one really, really good habit that I've kind of kept my entire life, reading. is I read, read a lot, so anytime I'll be reading like 
two to three books. So, yeah. yeah so, yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes, yeah, and, and, and my fiance thinks I'm crazy because I have like one and I'll get like, I'll put it down because I like just can't read it and I'll jump over the other yeah. one. So, yeah. So if I could be as disciplined with like the rest of my life as I am with like reading it, yeah. I'd, be in a, I'd be in a good spot. I know so, exactly what you mean though. Like you have five books on like the shelf and they're yeah. like all halfway through and yeah. like, which one do I get, like, I get like some, like, yeah, some on like nutrition and health <laughs> and others. I'm like, I, I picked up this thing on uh, the world of like I'm so weird. Like oh, the world of mushrooms. I was reading this thing about all the health benefits oh, of mushrooms. I was weird. Yeah, yeah. So Tim Ferriss is big on that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I just get interested in stuff and I kind of geek out on it. So it's fun though. How many That's books cool. would you say you read a year? Um, I try to do um, at least two a month. So awesome. yeah, yeah. So, I literally just had a meeting with one of my trainers and I was like, "Do you read books yet?" He like, "No, not really." I'm like, "Dude." employees read like two books a year yeah. CEOs read about 25 books a year yeah that's so the difference yeah and, and that's kind of uh luckily I've always just been it's kind of um a ho- it's like one of my hobbies so it kind of works out well but yeah I just like I get interested in things and I kind of like get OCD and kind of like, like obsessive yeah I get kind of obsessive yeah. over certain things I know, so, I know so I'm, wor- I'm working on that a little bit because sometimes I like just you know like <laughs> there'll be like an Amazon uh, box and my fiance will open up. She'll be like, what did you order now? Like, <laughs> 10 books. 10 on books. On, yeah. <laughs> she's like, what are you doing? That's awesome. like, I don't know. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. All, right. All right. Question number two. Number two. What purchase of a hundred, what purchase of a hundred dollars or less in the last six months has really made an impact on, you know, it could be anything from productivity to, you know, just everyday life, nutrition, anything. So one purchase. One purchase, um, I will say the Headspace meditation app. Um, okay. Okay. So it's like two ninety nine a month, uh, and that's been something. It's probably been uh, one of the things in the last couple of years that um, just kind of having like a hectic work uh, life schedule. It's been one of the really uh, one of the really healthy things that I've done for myself uh, in, in kind of trying to keep balance with just trying to run a business, have a social life party, work out, do all those sorts of things. It's kind of like focuses you in on some like just personal alone time, which I think is healthy sure. as you're kind of doing, as you're kind of just out and active and doing things all the time. You're so first to say that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I, um, yeah, so I started doing that and now I'm kind of getting really into it. Not just like, uh, just doing the app, but, but, uh, you know, trying to learn a little bit about the process. And I mean, there's tons of stuff just from like, uh, from like health benefits, even like, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, they're talking about just meditating can kind of re-regulate like hormones and kind of your stress levels and things within your body. Uh, and so I just find all that kind of fascinating. And I mean, and all you have to do is like breathe, breathe and think just, of nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like pretty right? easy. Which so, is, yeah. yeah. It, so, it is pretty crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Can, John, do you meditate? So I don't, I've tried. So I don't traditionally, I always tell people this, I don't traditionally meditate. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But for me, it's like working out. Like that is my yeah. meditation because I'm not thinking of anything else. But like, yeah, that's the same it's thing. It's living in the moment. Like it's whatever you're doing then. So I have more success doing it that way than just trying to sit down. Same thing as running. Yeah, yeah, yeah running's the same way. Runners are like you'll that. Get there. You'll get there. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> I, since I saw him two years ago, had my family there at Blake's. I don't know how we got on the topic of meditation. I seriously saw you like two seconds at Blake's heart. Center. you're like, oh, I've been meditating. Try this headspace app. Since that day, I've been meditating every single day. Yeah. Dude, I love it. All right, yeah. That's my meditation. Yeah. I need to get this app. Yeah, definitely, man. <laughs> it's just, it's, I think it's something you, it makes you less reactionary to things. And I, I kind of need that because I'm always like, you know, you, especially as you kind of uh, get involved more and more. And if you're, you know, around clients or employees or whatever, I think having kind of a, a, yeah. a little bit of a space between like your reactions yeah. and like your thoughts a little right. bit. I mean, you can, yeah, it's, it's fun, man. I, the Headspace app, just so you guys know right now, the way they do it now, it used to be the start series was 10 minutes long yeah. like each day. Now they're three minutes. So I yeah. think anybody can really get their start with Headspace. All right, next question. How has a failure or apparent failure set you up for later success? Basically, do you have a favorite failure of yours? Uh, lots of them. Uh, but yeah, probably my biggest one was actually really recently. and. I don't know if it set me up for success, but I learned a lot from it. And I think in, in a little bit, so we have the hard cider line and we kind of uh, recently launched an, an ale line, a fruit ale line. And I guess I kind of thought that with the um, just kind of the success of the hard cider, that would kind of just kind of 
you know, overflow into whatever other line we, we did. And I think I, I think I rushed it kind of assumed it would be a success. Didn't do kind of the uh, due diligence that we've done with all of our other products. And um, yeah, and it, and it hasn't been a f- complete failure, but it definitely didn't, uh, meet the expectations that I had hoped for. And I think now we're going to go back to the drawing board, uh, relaunch a similar program in a year with doing our due diligence and, and, and making sure that we dot all our I's and cross all our T's. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, uh, I think I just, you know, saw opportunity and kind of rushed it. And, and I think that, you know, good things take time. So, yeah. and, and, and you can't let your ego get in the way of, of trying to, um, you know, you think you have a success one, you know, with one thing, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate, you know, you gotta do, you gotta put in the work and put do the, the hard time. stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that was, that was a recent one. It was a failure, but you know, it didn't hurt us too bad. And there's, I think our whole team learned from our marketing team to our design team to, uh, you know, our production team, everyone kind of learned, uh, I guess, I think a lesson from it. Yeah. as far as what not to do moving forward you know that's awesome yeah i think it's just cool that hearing your take on failure because you have such an upbeat thing with failure you could tell like it's not like man i tried this l thing it's like completely failed you're like like upbeat like hey we're gonna learn a lot from us and go back to the drawing board to make it better yeah i mean if it doesn't tank your business and it doesn't like you know ruin your personal life you know it's like that it, it's recoverable you know so it's all right that's awesome so. very cool John, you got question number four. Yeah, number four. I'm going through these. All right. If you could have a giant billboard anywhere where, you know, whoever can see it, yep. what would you have on it? Could be a picture, a quote, you know, anything you want. What would it say or be? Uh, drink more cider. But no. <laughs> um, no, but honestly, I think that if it was just like one word, it would be, uh, it'd probably be like sacrifice because I think that um, there are, uh, so many people who want to do a lot of really, really amazing things. And I think their hearts are all in the right place. But I think that's ultimately probably one of the greatest human inventions is sacrifice. It's kind of what separates us from animals. You, if you're willing to delay some pleasure now for like, you know, a larger reward later, I think you have to be able to do that. And I know that's something that like fitness people are really good at, right? Cause you're willing to not eat that Jets pizza, which is my favorite food, um, <laughs> but you know, I willing to like eat that Jets pizza because you want to make sure you, you, you know, you're staying in shape and re- reaching your fitness goals. You're going to do that workout. So, you know, I see a lot of correlation to the, you know, the sacrifice part of it uh, in your guys's world. But um, I mean, in so many ways, whether, you know, it's the amount of hours you're going to put in or, you know, the amount of time you're spent to learn and understand your industry. Um, and you know, what you're going to sacrifice currently, even if it's, you know, you know, unfortunately having fun with friends or unfortunately even, um, and I think it's important to balance this, but, and not spending as much time with your family as you'd want mm-hmm. to, but I think you have to, uh, if you want something, uh, big and bold, I think you have to sacrifice for it. So, um, that's one thing that I've, I've been pretty, uh, I've tried to discipline myself to, to make sure that that's kind of just what it takes. And you just kind of get in a mindset that, that that's what it is. So what are ways you get in that mindset? Like for instance, you have a fiance now. Yeah. Like how does that, and there's probably a lot of times where you're traveling. Not yeah. The time. I think it's just being really honest and just, you know, at least, you know, being honest with what your goals are and where you want to be. And you know, the people that support you will be along for that, for that ride a little bit. And I, you know, I think it's, you know, it struggles cause you try not to be selfish uh, and you don't want to be selfish, but you know, I think at a certain time, if you're honest, then it's not really selfish cause everyone knows kind of where you're at, mm-hmm. you know? So I kind of, I, tr- I try to get, uh, in that mindset and I just kind of overarching, you know, kind of growing up on a farm and my dad and uncle were just extremely hard workers. And, and so I just kind of saw that they didn't talk about it much. They didn't do it. They just, they constantly just did it. So you just kind of like put yourself in that mindset a little bit. So, and I think the people around, you know, my mom was always really supportive of my dad and it was just kind of like a thing that just kind of became part of what your, what your normal is. Everyone has a different normal, right? Mm-hmm. So just, you kind of change what that normal is and then you adapt a little bit, I think. I think I was in seventh grade and the whole like town of Armada used to go to Gulf Shores, Alabama for spring break. All right. <laughs> and I'll never forget this. I remember being like, just watching this happen. Like, damn. So we're in Gulf Shores, Alabama. And it's like the best place to be as a kid. You don't want to be anywhere else. It's beach, there's girls, everything. We're like playing basketball every Water day, balloons. having fun. And I remember all of a sudden I'm with Joey Zeppelin and you guys had to leave, I think two days early because something happened at the farm. Yeah. And I remember Mr. Zeppelin and like everyone telling me like, yeah, they're just going. Like everyone just accepted it. Like, I think your mom was like, yeah, we're packing up, we're going. Like, 
that I would have cried my <laughs> eyes out. I'm like, no, we're leaving. But everyone's just like on the same page. Just got to do it. So talking about sacrifice, I mean, that's. Yeah, right it's, just, it's just kind of part. It's just kind of part of it. And Gulf Shores, man, I still, that was, that was a good time. <laughs> Talk all day about that one. <laughs> awesome. Water, awesome. Water balloons off the top of. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yes. <laughs> and jellyfish. Yeah. All right. What is one of the best or most worthwhile investments you've ever made? Could be an investment in money, time, energy. Um, I, uh, I don't really do the financial investment thing well yet, although I'm trying to learn that a little bit more personally, but I got lucky with Bitcoin. I bought a Bitcoin at like, shut. I bought, Bitcoin, I bought a Bitcoin like really early, like two years ago, one. Um, and it was just one. But <laughs> just it, one yeah, Bitcoin. just one Bitcoin. But, What'd you buy it for? What's that? I think it was like uh, $800. $800, oh, yeah. and now it's worth. Yeah, I sold it. I sold it at when it was wow. yeah when it was up to like when it kind of hit its peak. So I got I got lucky there. God, that. so but, but, I can't remember. Yeah, the only Bitcoin person I've ever met that's actually yeah, bought. I bought one. I bought one Bitcoin. Yeah, just one. one. Yeah, just one. And um, so I got super lucky with that, mostly because I have smart friends who are into that, and they kind of literally like, like hey, you should do this. When did you buy like, it? Like a year and a half ago, maybe. Two. Because really? I think right now to buy one Bitcoin is what the price. Yeah, it's like it was at seventeen. I think it's at like twelve grand wow. now. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so it's just right time, right place. Luckily, lucky to have smart friends. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> so I got super lucky there. But um, the other investment is I think I, I've been starting to take a lot more uh, investment in, in, in myself, I guess, just time trying to work out, trying to uh, sauna, meditate, just trying to do things to keep uh, to keep my my myself up to a, at least a halfway optimal level to a, de to a degree. You're um, here on a Friday. Yeah. To get your ass beaten yeah. Tonight, I'm though. excited, man. It'll be good. <laughs> oh shit. So I got to talk about that a little bit though, because like, I know a lot of people watching this, listening to this are, you know, they are very busy with their business and yeah. whatever they do. Like, how do you, f do you find that like, you know, eating healthier, working out more, does that affect your productivity? productivity in a positive way or yeah so i get yeah so i get into um like i'm kind of like i think we talked about earlier a little bit of obsessive uh to a degree at least when it comes to work and things like that so um i always um so basically my trying to balance that is trying to like get away from work mm -hmm. a little bit so um but i do notice when i do do that and i spend more time genuinely uh happier which is awesome yeah. um have more energy when i wake up like i can tell when i'm just like when i when i'm not working out not doing any of these other things and taking time i'll just i'll work a ton i'll run myself into the ground i'll notice myself i'll wake up late i'll wake up tired and you just kind of you're not in that um and you generally just get i think a little bit more uh, or at least i do a little bit more of a negative perspective on everything that you're doing so um you know so so to keep it positive and to keep it there i think you know getting a lot of sleep you know, that's yeah, one thing I've been like, yeah. I've always had an easy time sleep. But I never really realized the importance of it. So like, Ooh, yeah. you know, making sure you, like you get uh, enough sleep, uh, make sure that you actually eat halfway healthy. Um, you know, I, I've been doing the whole not eating till noon thing recently, which um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've been liking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but I definitely noticed just a general uh, better sense of well being when I, when I do those things. And, you know, as you get older, I think when you're younger, you can kind of like, doesn't matter as much and you can kind of like block that out or it doesn't matter maybe you're just so young and i don't know full of energy yeah it just doesn't matter but as you get older like it does affect you and you know mm -hmm. then it affects your work and your relationships and so it's become more and more of an important part of my life to kind of try to keep some sort of balance with 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 everything that goes on yeah i mean that's remarkable to hear because i cannot imagine how busy i mean you could work 24 hours a day if you want with this blake sard cider and how much you guys got going on but it, well, it's like, it's like a certain point, you're never going to get everything that you need to get done in a day. So you got to compartmentalize and, and kind of balance a little bit. Uh, and that's been, um, that's been something that's kind of a, a working, work in progress, uh, too. That's what you're so, here for, man. Yeah, that's there right. You go. There we go. All right. So out of the next one, what's an unusual habit or, you know, absurd thing that you do? What's a weird thing about you? Anything. Uh, weird thing about me. Um, Oh, it's like reading about mushrooms. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty weird. Um, farmer, yeah, so right. It's, it's okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm pretty weird and uh, pretty weird in general. <laughs> Just like everything I do, I feel is a little bit weird and quirky. Um, I listen to a lot of classical music. I read a bunch. Uh, into a bunch of just weird hobbies. Classical uh, music. Yeah. Like yeah. when? Like What's driving that? the car? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So no words, just kind of music. So yeah. that's weird. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I get, uh, um, uh, we're not going to play it today. The gym. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, good. yeah. That's all right. That's all right. Um, no, I listen, I got, I got pretty wide, uh, enjoyment of music from all, but in the mornings, I don't know why I do that, but I do that. That's cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's so, awesome. so that's kind of weird. <laughs> I like it, dude. Okay. In the last five years, what new belief, behavior, or habit has most improved your life? Mm, habits been meditation for sure. Uh, for sure. For sure. And, uh, yeah, and I think I think uh, I, I've been kind of coming to a belief uh, a little bit that you can't necessarily like force where your life is going to take you. Uh, and I think when you do, it causes a lot of stress and anxiety. Uh, it, but best thing to do is what I'm. Tr this is like a slow revelation over the last like two years of kind of like hitting a wall on some things. Is that you just got to keep your vehicle. You're just you're just in a vehicle going to a destination that you're not sure where that's taking. You just got to keep your vehicle like tuned up and in good shape. And then you'll be able to get there in the quickest, best, most efficient way possible. Uh, wow. And so I think that that's kind of what I've been trying to like, and I know it's kind of counter to uh, what, um, I don't know, like you definitely want to have a goal and you want to have, I'm not saying that, but I think that uh, to understand that that goal um, might not be where you end up and then that has to be okay. And you, and it might be even better than where a lot of, you hear a lot of people, you know, some of the, some people that I really admire, they're like, they, they've gotten this place that they never dreamed of. Right. And that means I think what they were is they, they kind of had a goal, um, but they kept their, their vehicle in, in a good place to be able to optimize and, and to adjust on that. So, because what I've realized is like, if you set, especially people who are like very ambitious, very, um, you know, very focused. I mean, that goal can kind of drive you crazy into like kind of an insanity, almost to the point of insanity where you're like, you know, and, you, and you're not patient enough. And, you know, you don't know the timeline for that goal. You don't know what it's going to take to get there, how long it's going to take to get there. And I think the best thing to do is have that goal, do the small things in between to get to that goal and then keep your, keep your stuff, uh, you know, be in as prime a possible position to take advantage of when you get a big opportunity to leap really close to that goal. So I think that's it. Cause I think, um, there's like kind of an obsession with what like one specific goal. And I think that makes you too rigid. Like who knows, you know, you don't necessarily know where that, that original goal, you know, you might take a path that goes a little bit more this way or a little bit more this way. And that's not a bad thing. You know, maybe you start off on you know this fitness journey and maybe you become, you know, you find this health drink that you you know, get involved in. Maybe it's not so much the working out part. Maybe it's this other thing. So I think keeping less rigid ideas of those goals and keeping them a little bit more fluid would be maybe a good way to, good way to do it. That's really good. I yeah. think, I, no, I think I that's, no, what I've been, that's, that's what I've been thinking a lot lately because um, one, it's kind of limiting. You have one goal and whatever, and then you're like, what and then you don't see it and you don't see anything on the peripherals. And I think sometimes the peripherals are, are where some really good stuff lies. And I think what's so, like, the time of year too and now that it's like it's 2018 like everybody looks back on the last yeah. year like look back at what goals you had like start 2017 and my guess is for most people like the best things that happened weren't actually those things right you yeah, know what I mean? yeah yeah it, they were probably related to it somehow yeah but you know it was getting towards that and then some other opportunity came up that yeah probably ended up being yeah. better and i think sometimes if you have a little bit of a faith in 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 life and just how things will work out that sometimes good things just get really awesome things opportunities you just get placed in front of you and they're not really things you necessarily worked for yeah. i met my fiance like on a blind date randomly you know so like that wasn't i wasn't planning or whatever so some of the best things that happen uh kind of just happen yeah, yeah just yeah. kind of happened and so i think just keep your stuff keep your mind right your health right and everything in between and and then you know just chip away daily a That's little awesome. bit like it i think i think i know it's it's, it's spot on it's, yeah. it's something that you don't hear often too because it's so easy to say go to your goals write your goals and yeah i'm one of those guys that says that yeah but now looking at it especially with weight loss yeah i want to lose 50 pounds i gotta lose 50 yeah. pounds by november and the question is like okay if you lose 50 pounds what is gonna happen yeah like is your spouse gonna love you more because yeah. of that you know yeah. like it's just well, i even look at like fitness like i said i want to drop x amount of pounds and i'm like well i really don't want to yeah. i just want to basically get into a place where i'm like damn, I'm in good shape again, mm -hmm. you know, and then because doing that. Yeah. And, and you know, and the thing is I want to do that, but I don't want to necessarily not have a social life. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to have to count, uh, 
calories. You, you want know? to be so extreme. Exactly. Just keep it going. Yeah, yeah I don't want. I don't want to be able to not have a cheeseburger at a bar. You yeah, know? whatever. No, that's that's fun. You know? it's, it's what sucks about that is we hear so much that in fitness. Yeah. yeah. Like especially, I know places that like you got to eat this for six weeks. Yeah. Right. Well, it, you know, yeah. because you got to lose these weight, and it's like. Right. And that's why I'm like, if you can work out and you maybe not eat till noon, and maybe you make sure you have, you know. And I don't have the answer because that's fitness has been the one thing that I've been able to discipline. I think it's really easy to be disciplined to other people. Um, that's why it's kind of cool doing this thing. Cause you're kind of mm-hmm. disciplined to, to y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's some, sometimes it's really hard to be disciplined to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, that's kind of the hardest. Yeah, I think, you know? I mean, yeah. That's, we talk about this all the time is like, we are like fitness guys. We do yeah. this stuff for a living. Right? But like, like I write his programs, like yeah. I've done his programs. Like, you know, right. we all, kind of intermingle and, yeah, and when, coach each other when you have someone else it kind of you feel almost more accountable, yeah, accountable exactly. to that person than you do yourself you know? exactly so okay. next question all right dropping knowledge here man all right so how long ago did you graduate college then uh 11, 11. So what is that seven okay. years ago so seven yeah. years ago so now kind of oh, seven years of right. experience know, like right? business life what advice would you give to you know a smart driven college student you know on just you know i guess what would be the top piece of advice you would give them um to a young person i'll go before college i don't think you have to um you don't have to get the degree um and so i think you can i think you that um i've seen success in a lot of um in a lot of places from a lot of people and it really just comes with a passion and, and getting your hands dirty and getting involved and just doing it i see a lot of people from afar that read and then they never do and they're just like kind of experts or kind of peripheral uh you know i guess commentators on things but i think the people that i've really admired um really they're just people who i mean they didn't let that like I think some people get this thing like I can't do this until I have the degree, then I can do this. But like I think the real, I think movers and people who actually do it, they're kind of doing it the whole time. And yeah, degrees, I mean, extremely important in a lot of cases. But I guess like don't put the degree first. I guess yeah, put the passion fun. first and do it, and let the degree follow and let that be, you know, kind of a uh, an evolution of that. Because I think when you really get involved um, with it, you know, if you're going to for finance, you know, you don't have to wait. Uh, so you have the finance degree to start, you know, investing a hundred dollars, you know, and play around in the stock market or whatever, you know, you don't have to do that. If you want to be a fitness expert, you're probably, you know, you're going to school for it, but you're probably learning it through trial and error all the while through, you know? And exactly. so I think some people, uh, unfortunately they kind of wait to get the degree before they like really, um, get the experience. And I think they get caught in this thing where they never can move forward without you know having like some sort of certification or whatever you know so i don't know that'd be i think and i don't think that um if people don't want to go to school i think there's lots of great opportunities for people who want to get into like vocational programs and you know more skilled trades and crafts i think that that's equally as admirable and i don't think enough people do that um anyway so i don't think that the university necessarily is the all the the end all be all for all people. I think people should feel okay about that. Yeah. There's no, it shouldn't, there's not, it's not like it's a black flag. Yeah. You no, know? I didn't go. So I hope my wife is watching this right now because we have this topic all the time with, with my boys. With, with the yeah. boys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you got well, some, yeah, you got some time yeah, on some that. Time. <laughs> I mean, by then, who knows? Yeah, like, right. You know, I honestly, I'm like, exactly. Like, 17 years from now, I really wonder what the college landscape will be like. I think it'll be a lot different. I think there'll be a lot of self, I mean, people are able now with technology to be a little bit self educators and not that that's always the the best thing. You definitely want some guidance. You want kind of that student teacher mentor mentality. Um, but I think there's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole different deal, you know? And I think um, the one thing I think with colleges right now is like the, a lot of times the academic and the academia in college is like, like 10, years behind mm-hmm. the actual newest and up-to-date kind actual of actual deal I know, yeah day. i know that, i know that's like a thing in like med schools now you know they're teaching stuff and there's studies within the last 10 years that are different from what they're teaching mm-hmm. and you know so i think that that's, that's good to know. yeah i think that i think that technology is going to change a lot of that so i don't know what that looks like but yeah. i think it's going to be good for people i think uh, access to information and knowledge is going to make everyone right. generally a little bit you know yeah more capable and yeah if i follow the stuff i learned in college about weight loss and nutrition yeah, no, i wouldn't have one weight loss client because no. yeah right yeah, straight yeah, up you know yeah I mean? that's i mean yeah i mean i think we can every let me, hold up let me, let me pause myself because i don't want michigan state to look bad because <laughs> I, I would say in my classes like in the curriculum that kind of stuff yeah 
I didn't learn too much. I, I don't re- remember that much. But the hands-on from Michigan State, from Coach Ken Manny, yeah. Mike Vorkovich, those guys where they put me in the trenches and, and said just fucking That's Dewey. Yeah. That's, you know, that's exactly what you're saying. That's, that's Dewey. That's everything. the internships. That's the going out and, and trying yeah, these yeah, things. Right? Whatever you're learning, applying them. And yeah, and what was that whole thing even like with Dio? Isn't it like the whole you couldn't have fats, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, that's low and fat, right? and, and now isn't that like – it's, it's, It still exists today. Well, people, like, people come in all the time and they're like, well, I can't eat fat. Like, it's going to make me fat. I'm drinking that's not all, how it works. I drink all in milk because it's a lot less fat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. You know, that's that – Yeah, was, right. So, yeah, started. that's like a whole, you know. Yeah, so it's exactly the same. All right, on this yeah. topic, yeah. here's the next question. Anyways. What are bad recommendations you hear in your profession? <laughs> Um, or area of expertise. Drinking anything but milk. Like, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, bad recommendations. Uh, that's a that's a good one that I hear in my just in business in general. Yeah, or... I guess you could use this business. And... Let me think on that one. We'll come back. That's, to that's it. Never... Yeah, what's the next one? Let in the last on five years, know. what have you become better at saying no to? Um, I've been uh, I've been better at uh, saying no to. Um, kind of I guess social things like I when I first got out of college I was like yes to everything every trip every party every every everything um I would say yes to yeah exactly and (laughs) yeah and uh and 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 I think that like when you do that it's like there's just no none of that personal time or that taking time for yourself so like that investment in myself has made me I've said no to a lot more uh recently so um you know I would like to say I could say no to like uh Jets pizza, like every uh, every Sunday football day. But right, we're gonna control so it. We're gonna work on that. But yeah, I'm I'm working on that. But yeah, I mean the social the social thing, which I really enjoy. But you know, I think at a certain time you burn yourself out, and you know you got to kind of keep it, you know, keep it between the lines a little bit. You know, you you run yourself uh, ragged a little bit. It's my wife. I gotta take this. <laughs> hey Sam. Hey. Hey, you're on the podcast right now. You called in. Hi, Sam. It's our first call in guest. Hello? Hey. <laughs> We're live on a podcast with Andrew Blake. Say hi. Hey. Sorry. Hey, you're live on a podcast right now. Oh. Hi, Sam. That? We're with Andrew Blake. Hi. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Sam. How are you? I'm great. Oh, wonderful. And, hey, if you have one question for Andrew, what would it be right now? <laughs> uh, well, I could start drinking right now. So what hard cider do you recommend? Uh, that's a good question. We have um, our newest um, cider coming out. Actually, uh, it came out last week. We have our Rainbow Seeker, which is uh, pineapple and sage cider. So and- getting ready for some tropical, <laughs> yeah, a little sage. tropical flavor for the uh, spring and uh, summertime. Big rainbow colored can. You can't miss it. <laughs> oh, love it. I'm just leaving the doctors with two um, sick boys. So getting them out the door and in the car was a challenge. <laughs> Is date night canceled or are we good? Uh, no, we should be good. All right, cool. All right. All right. Well, All right. Bye, bye, Sam. Bye. Good luck See with the kiddos. Sam. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Okay, back to Two it. Two sick kids, huh? Yeah. Hey, another day, man. Another yeah. day. <laughs> last question. This All is a right. good one. Well, second to last, we got to go back to that. Yeah. One too. yeah. So when you feel overwhelmed or on focus, what do you do? I mean, I think uh, kind of touched on this already. Yeah. But. So I one thing I do pretty well is I I go for a walk. So luckily I work on a farm. So um, basically, if I'll um, what I'll notice happening is something will like happen early and it'll kind of linger. You know, when you start getting kind of a repetitive mindset, this is what I'll do. Is I'll, I, I kind of ruminate probably too much on things, like just think over and over. So when I notice myself doing that, I'll either meditate, go for a walk, uh, or listen to like a song that I know and I'll just like sing it in my head. And then it kind of stops that. Back. Yeah, it gets it back because you kind of get in a loop, right? Or at least I do. Like I'll be thinking about something and it's a loop, a loop, and if it's not a good thing, it's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't put you in a bad spot. Yeah, right. Exactly. So, and there's things to do, you know, so we're going to be a little bit more present. But what was the question that right. I didn't do? So what are bad ac- or recommendations or advice, you know, in your profession and business in general, career, whatever? Uh, 
Okay, actually, um, that you have to know what you're doing to do, to do something. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think you actually have to. I think you just, I think if you jump in, so I look at like the hard cider thing, um, as much as I would like to tell the story that I was really good at it, and when we even started Blake's, the products we um, originally came out with were the best ever that wasn't the case it was a it's been an evolution i'd say now um our products are the best but when they started off i mean there was you know every other company out there was making better products than us probably you know i mean it was just myself and uh my buddy casey beeman and we were um just making stuff in my grandpa's garage and then we kind of transferred over this little production facility and they were good but they weren't nearly the level we're at now so you don't have to basically i think sometimes that that model of perfection before you release or something. I'm much more of a believer in the work in progress model um, of things, especially if you're starting small. It's a different thing if you're, you know, I don't know, you have all this capital and you're just going to launch this huge gym right off the bat and everything has to be perfect because you have that much invested in it. But when you're the one beautiful thing I think about doing a startup, starting from the ground up, starting, you know, um, your own personal business, especially if it's small, is like you don't have to be perfect as long as you just keep making the improvements along the way. You eventually get there. And I think that that is, um, I think, I don't know if people necessarily say that yeah, everything has to be perfect when you launch, but I think a lot of people have that mindset yeah. that like you can't jump into something until you really understand it and really become a, uh, um, you know, really become a master of it. That being said, I think that uh, one of the big things that people need to realize is like you have to do the small things to get to the big things. And I think that's the other thing too is like people will want to have this amazing, uh, uh, magnificent empire of a business, but I mean, they can't clean their offices and they can't clean their, you know, their desks and mm -hmm. things are a mess and whatever. So I think that if you don't do those things, like how are you ever going to, you know, run this huge, whatever, I mean, you can't, you know, run your small thing, you mm -hmm. know, so I think it has to come in stages too. And that's kind of like the, you know, the earning it part, you know, and I think that people, I think aren't humble enough to realize that that might be the case, you yeah. know, of why they're not getting past their, um, where they're previously at. Because if, you know, it'll, I mean, it'll implode if you don't do the small things along the way. Right. So the yeah, because it's really easy to always think of the big things and the big grandiose things. But I think if people have a like a, and one thing I think meditation helps with is you get a, like more of a removed view where you're not just so in your goals and these big things and you kind of step back and, you know, there's all these other things that need to happen along the way. You know, you don't go from here to there necessarily, you know, I mean, that's very, very rare can happen, but it's rare, you know, I'm learning a lot from this. So, yeah, right. this, yeah, this, 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 is my, this is good. So, but one common thing I'm hearing though, is like, I'm reading tribe of mentors by Tim Ferriss, which is like yeah. world renowned artists. I mean, just big, big people, but also a lot of what you said is similar to what I hear from my mentor, Rob Farrell. Yeah. And he built SVS, which is one of the biggest eyeglass companies yeah. in the West. And he's always talking about tiny little steps. You got to break it down in tiny little steps. But if you don't take these steps. Yeah. So, that's like, yeah, so yeah. right now the thing I'm dealing with is we're starting to add a lot more people, a lot more admin people. And one thing I can't figure out is how to keep our offices clean and everyone's workspace. So, like, you go into, like, you know, I don't know, um, Quicken Loans or whatever, and you notice everyone's office is like dialed in and like everyone has the respect for the job or maybe it's just the, the elevation of what's expected at that place of work where it's like, you know, it's, it's tidy, neat, organized, there's systems, you know, and ours is, I kind of like it a little bit, but it's a little chaotic, messy and whatever. And that's great. But, you know, trying to figure out how to kind of ingrain that in the culture where, you know, everyone kind of takes ownership of their own space and uh, that sort of thing. And that's like a weird little thing. I don't even know what that really means for the business, if it helps, hurts or whatever, but it's just something I've noticed that it's like, you see these other businesses that are evolved much further than where ours is. And like, these things aren't happening. So what, how did those things not happen? How, what's, different there than at our place. So um, those are some of the things that I kind of look at. Let me back up a couple of steps. You said that this right here was started in your, what garage? Whose garage? My grandpa's garage. You guys were just experimenting. Me and Casey were- How old yeah. were you? Uh, we were- uh, 24? No, so yeah, seniors in college. So, college. so 22. So did you 22 ever, years old. Yeah. Like, did you guys have any experience, like anyone in your family have experience like brewing anything? Did you or? think this would happen? No, no, I didn't think this would happen. I thought it, I thought it would happen. I didn't think it would happen uh, to this level. Um, but yeah, honestly, how we learned was, uh, YouTube yeah. <laughs> and, wow. and we went to some people in the state that were making it and we we're like, let us work a day with you. Yeah. And so we worked a day and we're like for free. Yeah. For free. And then we were just like, this is amazing. And we were just like, Hey, and then we were kind of came back and we're like, 
it's not that hard. It's really? like, we, can actually, like, we can definitely do this. And, and then like, and then you just kind of jump in and uh, yeah. And then, you know, we kind of had the expectation we wanted it to be really good, um, but we knew that we'd evolve on it. So it didn't have to be absolutely perfect. And, you know, you just kind of evolve it from there. So, so yeah. that's not a lesson for anyone out there. Like who's got a dream. I mean, he started his garage. He went and worked for free just to see how it was done. YouTube, did, one which anybody can do. Yeah. But I mean, that's, that's what you do. Yeah. yeah. Reach just, out and reach out to people, man. People will be willing to share experience. And I mean, multiple times in business, uh, you know, it's amazing. You can learn one cool thing about humans. You can, you don't have to go through all the pains that all the people previous to us had. You can kind of take a few leaps and some jumps and learn from people. And people in my experience are pretty willing to be like, don't do that. That I spent two years messing around Everyone loves with this. Be, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think people really do want to help and want to give insight. And if you're willing to ask questions and be humble and try to learn, yeah. uh, I think that there's a wealth of knowledge from just people who are well, you know, ready and willing to give it so and i think for you know most people too like they don't get those questions a lot yeah like because people are scared to ask them so right. like they're yeah. like yeah i want to help like yeah you know what i mean yeah don't be afraid to ask you're like how would you do this how I mean, you, what's you know? the worst thing can happen they say you know yeah. i don't have time for this right now see it like that's the worst thing can happen. yeah right. and that doesn't happen yeah you know? it doesn't happen yeah, yeah. yeah. right this guy came up. to me as an intern and yeah. he goes um uh, i'm like is this for a degree is this for something he goes no i just want the experience he had two jobs college kid like yeah and i was like you're hired yeah. on the spot. Like, boom, let's go. You know what I mean? So I didn't hire him on the spot. He had right. to work for it like six months interning, but it was like, yeah, I know I want this guy here. Yeah. Right. Another guy reached out to me from like Ohio. He drove four hours up here this summer just to shadow me for a day. For, yeah, for yeah. Like four like, hours. To... He's like, dude, I didn't think you'd answer. I'm like, of course I'd answer. Yeah, yeah come up. He has in the back because I did a, a track workout with him. And <laughs> he's talking to me today. <laughs> but. Never coming back. <laughs> so, um, no, man, it was good. Thank you for having me on. No, Anderson, yeah, where great. can yeah, where people can find you? you? Besides um, in every single. Yeah, Meyer, Kroger, uh, most of your targets, um, most bars will carry it. Um, if you're in the Midwest or any of our uh, 17 states, just type in your zip code. Uh, on our cider finder at blakeshardcider.com and it'll tell you all the spots closest to where you're at uh, and where you can find us. Awesome. Boom. And Acceleration Fitness members, next Monday we're going to do shotguns before our sprints of this stuff. Just to support <laughs> Andrew. Uh, well, but thanks for having me on, guys. Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Appreciate uh, it. Yeah. Andrew, I'll put in the show notes. Yeah, if you Andrew, are. Paul Blake, and Blake AN 89 uh, on Instagram. So this is Acceleration Fitness go. Podcast number two. For 2018, guys, tune back in next week. We have our, our next special guest. Cool. Thanks, guys. Chase, see you. Oh, shit. 11. 11. What is that? Seven okay. years ago. So seven yeah. years ago. So now kind of oh, seven years of experience, know, like right? business life. What advice would you give to, you know, a smart, driven college student, you know, on just, you know, I guess what would be the top piece of advice you would give them? Um, to a young person? I'll go before college. Okay. I don't think you have to – um, you don't have to get the degree. Um, and so I think you can, I think you, that, um, I've seen success in a lot of, um, in a lot of places from a lot of people. And it really just comes with a passion and getting your hands dirty and getting involved and just doing it. I see a lot of people from afar that read and then they never do. And they're just like kind of experts or kind of peripheral, uh, you know, I guess commentators on things, but I think the people that I've really admired, um, really, they're just people who, I mean, they didn't let that, like, I think some people get this thing, like, I can't do this until I have the degree, then I can do this. But like, I think the real, I think movers and people who actually do it, they're kind of doing it the whole time. And yeah, degrees, I mean, extremely important in a lot of cases, but I guess like, don't put the degree first, I guess, put the passion first and do it and let the degree follow and let that be, you know, kind of a, uh, an evolution of that. Cause I think when you really get involved, um, with it, you know, if you're going to, for finance, you know, you don't have to wait, uh, till you have the finance degree to start, you know, investing a hundred dollars, you know, and play around in the stock market or whatever, you know, you don't have to do that. If you want to be a fitness expert, you're probably, you know, you're going to school for it, but you're probably learning it through trial and error all the while through, you know? And exactly. so I think some people, uh, unfortunately they kind of wait to get the degree before they like really, um, get the experience. And I think they get caught in this thing where they never can move forward without, you know, having like some sort of certification or whatever, you know? So I don't know, that'd be, I think, and I don't think that um, if people don't want to go to school, I think there's lots of 
great opportunities for people who want to get into like vocational programs and, you know, more skilled trades and crafts. I think that that's equally as admirable and I don't think enough people do that. Um, anyway, so I don't think that the university necessarily is the, all the, the end all be all for all people. I think people should feel okay about that. Yeah. There's no, it shouldn't, there's not, it's not like it's a black flag, yeah. you know, I didn't go. So I hope my wife is watching this right now because we have this topic all the time with, with my boys. With, with yeah. the boys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. You got well, yeah, you got some time on some that. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, by then, who knows? Yeah, like, right. You know, I honestly, I'm like, exactly. like, 17 years from now, I really wonder what the college landscape will be like. I think it'll be a lot different. I think there'll be a lot of self. I mean, people are able now with technology to be a little bit self educators. And not that that's always the, the best thing. You definitely want some guidance. You want kind of that student teacher mentor mentality. Um, but I think there's going to be a whole, it's going to be a whole different deal, yeah. you know? And I think um, the one thing I think with colleges right now is like the, a lot of times the academic and the academia in colleges like like 10 years behind mm-hmm. the actual newest and up-to-date kind actual of actual deal I, I know, yeah i know that, i know that's like a thing in like med schools now you know they're teaching stuff and there's studies within the last 10 years that are different from what they're teaching mm-hmm. and you know so i think that that's, that's good to know. yeah i think that i think that technology is going to change a lot of that so i don't know what that looks like but yeah. i think it's going to be good for people i think uh, access to information and knowledge is going to make everyone right. generally a little bit you know yeah more capable mm-hmm. and yeah. If I followed the stuff I learned in college about weight loss and nutrition, yeah, no, I wouldn't have one weight loss client because no. yeah, right, yeah, straight yeah, up. Yeah, know. that's. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think we can every. Let me hold up. Let me, let me pause myself because I don't want Michigan State's in the bag because <laughs> I would say in my classes, like in the curriculum, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I didn't learn too much. I, I don't re- remember that much. But the hands-on from Michigan State, from Coach Ken Manny, yeah. Mike Vorkovich, those guys where they put me in the trenches and, and said, just fucking That's Dewey. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that's Dewey. exactly what you're saying. That's That's, Dewey. Where that's the internships. That's the going out and, and trying yeah. these yeah, things. Right? Whatever you're learning, applying them. And yeah, and what was that whole thing even like with diet? Wasn't it like the whole you couldn't have fats, you know? Was, yeah. You know, I mean, low and, fat, that, right? and now isn't that like – it's, it's, It still exists today. Well, people, like, people come in all the time and they're like, well, I can't eat fat. Like it's going to make me fat. I'm drinking that's all. How it works. I drink almond milk because it's a lot less fat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. You know that's. That yeah. Was, right. So yeah, started. that's like a whole. You know. Yeah. So it's exactly the same. All right. On this yeah. topic, yeah. here's the next question. Anyways. What are bad recommendations you hear in your profession? <laughs> um, or area of expertise. Drinking anything but milk. Like <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, bad recommendations. Uh, that's a that's a good one that I hear in my. Just in business in general. Yeah, or, I guess you could use this business and. Let me think on that one. We'll that's, come back to this number. Yeah, what's the next one? In the last on five one. years, know. what have you become better at saying no to? Um, I've been, uh, I've been better at uh, saying no to, um, kind of, I guess, social things. Like I, when I first got out of college, I was like yes to everything, every trip, every party, every every everything. Um, I would say yes to. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, and, and and I think that like when you do that, it's like there's just no none of that personal time or that taking time for yourself. So like that investment in myself has made me. I've said no to a lot more uh, recently. So um, you know, I would like to say I could say no to like uh, Jets pizza like every uh, every Sunday football day. But <laughs> we're gonna control so it. <laughs> we're gonna work on that. But yeah, I'm I'm working on that. But yeah, I mean the social the social thing, which I really enjoy but you know i think at a certain time you burn yourself out and you know you got to kind of keep it you know keep it between the lines oh, yeah. a little bit you know you you run yourself uh ragged a little bit it's my wife i gotta take this <laughs> <laughs> hey sam hey. hey you're on the podcast right now you called in hi sam it's our first call and guest hello <laughs> hey <laughs> We're live on a podcast with Andrew Blake. Say hi. Hey, sorry. Hey, you're live on a podcast right now. That's pretty weird. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm pretty weird and uh, pretty weird in general. Just like everything I do, I feel is a little bit weird and quirky. Um, I listen to a lot of classical music. I read a bunch, uh, into a bunch of just weird hobbies. Classical uh, music. Yeah. Like yeah. when? What's like driving a car? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's so cool. no words, just kind of music. So yeah. that's weird. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I get, 
Um, we're not going to play it today, the gym sale. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Um, no, I listen. I got I got pretty wide uh, enjoyment of music from all, but in the mornings, I don't know why I do that, but I do that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, awesome. so that's kind of weird. <laughs> I like it, dude. Okay. In the last five years, what new belief, behavior, or habit has most improved your life? Mm, habits been meditation for sure. Uh, for sure, for sure. And, uh, yeah. And I think, I think, uh, I, I've been kind of coming to a belief a uh, little bit that you can't necessarily like force where your life is going to take you. Uh, and I think when you do, it causes a lot of stress and anxiety. Uh, it, but best thing to do is what I'm, this is like a slow revelation over the last like two years of kind of like hitting a wall on some things is that you just got to keep your vehicle. You're just, you're just in a vehicle going to a destination that you're not sure where that's taking. You just got to keep your vehicle like tuned up and in good shape. And then you'll be able to get there in the quickest, best, most efficient way possible. Uh, wow. And so I think that that's kind of what I've been trying to like, and I know it's kind of counter to uh, what um, I don't know, like you definitely want to have a goal and you want to have, I'm not saying that, but I think that uh, to understand that that goal um, might not be where you end up and then that has to be okay. And you, and it might be even better than where a lot of, you hear a lot of people, you know, some of the, some people that I really admire, they're like, they, they've gotten this place that they never dreamed of. Right. And that means I think what they were is they, they kind of had a goal, um, but they kept their, their vehicle in, in a good place to be able to optimize and, and to adjust on that. So, because what I've realized is like, if you set, especially people who are like very ambitious, very, um, you know, very focused. I mean, that goal can kind of drive you crazy into like kind of an insanity, almost to the point of insanity where you're like, you know, and, you, and you're not patient enough. And, you know, you don't know the timeline for that goal. You don't know what it's going to take to get there, how long it's going to take to get there. And I think the best thing to do is have that goal, do the small things in between mm -hmm. to get to that goal and then keep your, keep your stuff, uh, you know, be in as prime a possible position to take advantage of when you get a big opportunity to leap really close to that goal. So I think that's it. Cause I think, um, there's like kind of an obsession with like one specific goal. And I think that makes you too rigid. Like who knows, you know, you don't necessarily know where that, that original goal, you know, that you might take a path that goes a little bit more this way or a little bit more this way. And that's not a bad thing. You know, maybe you start off on you know this fitness journey and maybe you become, you know, you find this health drink that you you know, get involved in. Maybe it's not so much the working out part. Maybe it's this other thing. So I think keeping less rigid ideas of those goals and keeping them a little bit more fluid would be maybe a good way to, good way to do it. That's really good. I think, yeah. I, no, I think I that's, no, what I've been, that's, that's what I've been thinking a lot lately because um, one, it's kind of limiting. You have one goal and whatever, and then you're like, and then you don't see it and you don't see anything on the peripherals. And I think sometimes the peripherals are, are where some really good stuff lies. I think what's so, like, the time of year too. And now that it's like, it's 2018, like everybody looks back on the last yeah. year, like look back at what goals you had, like start 2017. And my guess is for most people, like the best things that happened weren't actually those things. Right. You yeah. Know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. They, they were probably related to it somehow. Yeah. But you know, it was getting towards that. And then some other opportunity came up that yeah. probably ended up being yeah. better. And I think sometimes if you have a little bit of a faith in, 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 in life and just how things will work out that sometimes good things just get really awesome things opportunities you just get placed in front of you and they're not really things you necessarily worked for yeah. i met my fiance like on a blind date randomly you know so like that wasn't i wasn't planning or whatever so some of the best things that happen uh kind of just, just happen out of yeah it just yeah. kind of happened and so i think just keep your stuff keep your mind right your health right and everything in between and and then you know just chip away daily a little awesome. bit like it. i think i think i know it's it's, it's Spot on. It's, yeah. it's something that you don't hear often too, because it's so easy to say, "Go to your goals, write your goals." And yeah, I'm one of those guys that says that. Yeah. But now looking at it, especially with weight loss. Yeah. I want to lose 50 pounds. I gotta lose 50 yeah. pounds by November. And the question is, like, okay, if you lose 50 pounds, what is gonna happen? Yeah. Like, is your spouse gonna love you more because yeah. of that? You know, yeah. like, it's just. Well, I even look at it like fitness. Like I said, I want to drop X amount of pounds, and I'm like, well, I really don't want to. Yeah. I just want to basically get into a place where I'm like damn, I'm in good shape again, mm -hmm. you know, and then because doing gonna, that. Yeah. And, and you know, and the thing is I want to do that, but I don't want to necessarily not have a social life. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to have to count, uh, calories. You, you want to be so extreme. <laughs> exactly. Keep it going. Yeah. yeah I don't want, I don't want to be able to not have a cheeseburger at a bar. You yeah. Know? Whatever. No, that's that's fun. You know? it's, it's what sucks about that is we hear so much that in fitness. Yeah. Yeah. Like, especially I know places that like 
you got to eat this for six weeks. Yeah, right. Sit, yes. You know, yeah. because you got to lose this weight. And it's like, right. And that's why I'm like, if you can work out and you maybe not eat till noon, and maybe you make sure you have, you know, and I don't have the answer because that's fitness has been the one thing that I've been able to discipline. I think it's really easy to be disciplined to other people. Um, that's why it's kind of cool doing this thing because you're kind of mm-hmm. disciplined to to y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's some, sometimes it's really hard to be disciplined to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of the hardest. Yeah, I think, you know? I mean, yeah, that's we talk about this all the time. Is like we are like fitness guys. We do yeah. this stuff for a living, right? But like, like I write his programs. Like yeah. I've done his programs. Like you know, right. we all kind of intermingle and, yeah, and when, coach each other. When you have someone else, it kind of you feel almost more accountable, yeah, accountable exactly. to that person than you do yourself. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay. next question. All right, dropping knowledge here, man. All right. So, how long ago did you graduate college? Then? Uh, yes, that that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it man. Doing it. We are doing it. Yes, we are live here with Acceleration Fitness Podcast number two for, for 2018. The year. And today we have a very, very special guest. He's gonna introduce himself because I can't do him justice. But first, we got John Pat. John, how's the what week? Up? It's great, man. How's your week? Week's freaking phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. We, awesome week. we sold out the challenge in three hours this past week. What challenge you guys have? Body transmission challenge, man. It's going down. I need some of that. Uh, <laughs> I do. But I'm going to try to introduce this guy. But I, again, I don't think I'll do justice. You've probably heard of this before. Flannel mouth. I'll put it, get it right there. Uh, Blake's hard cider. So this is Andrew Blake. Andrew and I grew up together in Armada, Michigan. Andrew, since then, went to Michigan State, and I'll never forget it. I don't know if you remember this. I tell people the story all the time. I'm at Michigan State. We're by the bus station. It's like a nice day out. I run into Andrew, like, hey, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so I don't know how we got on this topic, but you're like, you know, what are you going to do when you graduate? And I asked you that. And you're like, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to try some, like, some hard cider stuff and, like, see how it goes. And I'm like, boom, yeah. two years later, in every single store, I'm seeing Blake's hard cider. Blake's like, oh, it's phenomenal. He's- yeah, man, it's been wild. And one time I'll remember is – you were doing, uh, I think, your wrestling photos, and you had this really sweet-looking, like, cream color suit on. I don't know yeah, if you remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I remember looking, and I was like, damn, that's a nice suit. <laughs> <laughs> I still have that suit. Yeah, but uh, the hard side of things has been going good, man. We're in uh, 17 states. Um, actually, we're in 15, soon to be 17 at the end of February. Um, so lots of travel. Um, but things are good. I think we're the eighth largest craft hard cider company in the country right now. Really? Yeah. So and how things, old are you guys? Just the cider? Uh, then? Yeah, just the cider part of it. Uh, the family farm has been around since 1946. But um, the hard cider part, uh, we started, my dad, my cousin, my uncle, and myself uh, started in 2013. Okay. Wow. So it's been kind of a quick uh, evolution. Um, been, uh, been a wild ride, a lot of travel. So that's why I'm here to, uh, I got engaged this past year wow. and looking, yeah, looking to get my ass back in shape. I've been drinking <laughs> probably like one too many of these flannel mouths. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, man, excited to, uh, to come check out your spot. I've been following what you guys have been doing and I mean, the place is awesome. Yes. And so we're, uh, we're pumped to get him back in shape. Yeah. We're going to give it, we're going to give we're going to give it a go. I ran a marathon and I, uh, this past October, and I had a goal of like four hours, uh, ended up like, you know, four and a half, which is like, that's kind of yeah, like, that's, that's, that's kind of old man. Uh, hey, that's, that's still a marathon. That's though. all right. Yeah. People can yeah. But, but what I realized is like diets, like, you know, basically 80% of it because I ran a marathon and I just ate like shit all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I'm running, you know, pizza, <laughs> beer, whatever. It doesn't work that way. At least when you're like getting, looking down the barrel of 30. And you know, then when yeah. you're done, you're like, okay, I need some else. Yeah, exactly. That's why I gave you a call. Yes. So you gave me a call. Go. We got him in and now it's going down. But for this podcast guys and all the podcasts we do, we're going to ask, ask Andrew some simple questions and see his response. So question number one, what is the book or book you've given most as a gift and why? Or what are one of the books that you highly recommend? Um, both by Joseph Campbell, my favorite author. Um, uh, the Art of Living by Joseph Campbell and Myths to Live By. I've never heard any of these. Okay. Yeah, they're awesome. Check them out. They basically, three years ago, I kind of ran across them. Um, it's kind of weird how books come into your life and then you're kind of like, I don't know how I live my life I didn't ha- if I didn't run across kind of some yeah. of those messages. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyways, yeah, anyone who hasn't read them, check them out. Um, He's a wonderful um, religious scholar and um, and theologian and awesome books. So, so art so, of living, art of living. Yeah. So it doesn't get into all, like any woo woo stuff or anything like that, but it's just a, a real practical approach to like looking at life. How did it change you? Uh, 
gave me just a, a interesting perspective on kind of the, the the journey of life. You know, there, he basically was a big founder of the hero's journey, mm -hmm. kind of when you pick a goal, kind of how, you know, you go into the, like kind of the unknown, you come out and you, you pull out kind of through that, you kind of transform and transform your life and come out with you know, an under, a great understanding. So um, if you get a chance, read it. It's an easy, it's not a hard read. It's been that book, man. I've yeah. never heard of it. Ch check it out. I'll, br I'll bring it next time. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I always, it's been the one thing uh, school wise um, was never kind of inclined as, as far as classes go, but I was always like a self uh, learner. So I've always been a, like a, vicious reader um on my own and i've continued that it's probably like my one really really good habit that i've kind of kept my entire life reading. is i read reading. read a lot so anytime i'll be reading like two to three books so yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. and and sometimes yeah I'm, I'm, and my fiance thinks i'm crazy because i have like one and i'll get like i'll put it down because i like just can't read it and i'll jump over the other yeah. one so yeah so if i could be as disciplined with like the rest of my life as i am with like reading it yeah. i'd be in a, I'd be in a good slot I know so, exactly what you mean, though. Like you have five books on like the shelf, and they're yeah. like all halfway through. And yeah. Like, which one? Do I got like, I got, like some. Like, yeah, some on like nutrition and health, <laughs> and others on like I, I picked up this thing on uh, the world of like I'm so weird. Like a, the world of mushrooms. Cause I was reading this thing about all the health benefits oh, of mushrooms. All this weird. Yeah, yeah. So Tim Ferriss is big on that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I just get interested in stuff, and I kind of geek out on it. So it's fun, though. How many it's books cool. would you say you read a year? Um, I try to do. Um, at least two a month. Nice. So That's awesome. at least twenty four. Yeah, yep. yeah. So, I literally just had a meeting with one of my trainers, and I was like, "Do you read books yet?" He looked, "No, not really." I'm like, "Dude, employees read like two books a year. Yeah. CEOs read about twenty five books a year." Yeah, that's so, the difference. Yeah, and, and that's kind of uh, luckily I've always just been. It's kind of um, a hot. It's like one of my hobbies, so it kind of works out well. But yeah, I just like I get interested in things, and I kind of like get OCD and kind of like. Like yeah, I get kind of obsessive yeah. over certain things. I know, so I know so I'm, wor that, I'm working yeah. on that a little bit because sometimes I like just, you know, like <laughs> there'll be like an Amazon uh, box and my fiance will open up. She'll be like, what did you order now? Like, <laughs> 10 books. 10 I books. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. cool. All, right. All right. Question number two. Number two. What purchase of a hundred? What purchase of a hundred dollars or less in the last six months has really made an impact on you know? It could be anything, productivity to you know, just everyday life, nutrition, anything. So one purchase. One purchase. Um, I will say the Headspace meditation app. Okay. Um, okay. so it's like two ninety nine a month. Uh, and that's been something. It's probably been uh one of the things in the last couple of years that um just kind of having like a hectic work uh, life schedule. It's been one of the really, uh, one of the really healthy things that I've done for myself uh, in, in kind of trying to keep balance with just trying to run a business, have a social life, party, work out, do all those sorts of things. It's kind of like focuses you in on some like just personal alone time, which I think is healthy sure. as you're kind of doing, as you're kind of just out and active and doing things all the time. You're so the first to say that. Yeah. Yeah. So I um yeah, so I started doing that and now I'm kind of getting really into it, not just like uh just doing the app, but but uh you know trying to learn a little bit about the process. And I mean there's tons of stuff just from like uh from like health benefits. Even like, mm -hmm. you know, they're 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 talking about just meditating can kind of re-regulate like hormones and kind of your stress levels and things within your body. Uh, and so I just find all that kind of fascinating. I mean, and all you have to do is like breathe, breathe and yeah. think just, of nothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like pretty right? easy. Which so, is, yeah. yeah. It, so, it is pretty crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Can, John, do you meditate? So I don't, I've tried. So I don't traditionally, I always tell people this, I don't traditionally meditate. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But for me, it's like working out. Like that is my yeah. meditation because I'm not thinking of anything else. But like, yeah, that's the same it's thing. It's living in the moment. Like it's whatever you're doing then. So I have more success doing it that way than just trying to sit down. Same thing as running. Yeah, yeah, yeah running's the same way. Runners are like you'll that. Get there. You'll get there. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> I, since I saw him two years ago, had my family there at Blake's. I don't know how we got on the topic of meditation. I seriously saw it for like two seconds at Blake's Heart Center. You're like, oh, I've been meditating. Try this Headspace app. Since that day, I've been meditating every single day. Yeah. Dude, I love it. All right, yeah. That's That's good. Meditation. Yeah. I need to get this app. Yeah, definitely, man. <laughs> it's just, it's, I think it's something you, it makes you less reactionary to things. And I, I kind of need that because I'm always like, you know, you, especially as you kind of uh, get involved more and more. And if you're, you know, around clients or employees or whatever, I think having kind of a, 
a, yeah. a little bit of a space between like your reactions yeah. and like your thoughts a little right. bit. I mean, you can, yeah, it's, it's fun, man. I, the Headspace app, just so you guys know right now, the way they do it now, it used to be the start series was 10 minutes long yeah. like each day. Now they're three minutes. So I yeah. think anybody can really get their start with Headspace. All right, next question. How has a failure or apparent failure set you up for later success? Basically, do you have a favorite failure of yours? Uh, lots of them. Uh, but yeah, probably my biggest one was actually really recently. And I don't know if it set me up for success, but I learned a lot from it. And I think in, in a little bit. So we have the hard cider line and we kind of uh, recently launched an, an ale line, a fruit ale line. And I guess I kind of thought that with the um, just kind of the success of the hard cider, that would kind of just kind of you know overflow into whatever other line we we did and i think i i think i rushed it kind of assumed it would be a success didn't do kind of the uh, due diligence that we've done with all of our other products and um yeah and it, and it hasn't been a f complete failure but it definitely didn't uh, meet the expectations that I had hoped for. And I think now we're going to go back to the drawing board, uh, relaunch a similar program in a year with doing our due diligence and, and, and making sure that we dot all our I's and cross all our T's. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things where uh, I think I just, you know, saw opportunity and kind of rushed it. And, and I think that, you know, good things take time. So, yeah. and, and, and you can't let your ego get in the way of, of trying to, um, you know, you think you have a success one, you know, with one thing, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate, you know, you gotta do, you gotta put in the work and put do the, the hard time. Stuff yeah, in. exactly. So, um, so that was, that was a recent one. It was a failure, but you know, it didn't hurt us too bad. And there's, I think our whole team learned from our marketing team to our design team to, uh, you know, our production team, everyone kind of learned, uh, I guess, I think a lesson from it. Yeah. as far as what not to do moving forward you know that's awesome yeah i think it's just cool that hearing your take on failure because you have such an upbeat thing with failure you could tell like it's not like man i tried this l thing it's like completely failed you're less like upbeat like hey we're gonna learn a lot from us and go back to the drawing board to make it better yeah i mean if it doesn't tank your business and it doesn't like you know ruin your personal life you know it's like that that's recoverable you know so it's all right that's awesome so very cool John, you got question number four. Yeah, number four. I'm through these. All right. If you could have a giant billboard anywhere where, you know, whoever can see it, yep. what would you have on it? Could be a picture, a quote, you know, anything you want. What would it say or be? Uh, drink more cider. But no. <laughs> um, no, but honestly, I think that if it was just like one word, it would be, uh, it'd probably be like sacrifice because I think that um, there are, uh, so many people who want to do a lot of really, really amazing things. And I think their hearts are all in the right place. But I think that's ultimately probably one of the greatest human inventions is sacrifice. It's kind of what separates us from animals. You, if you're willing to delay some pleasure now for like, you know, a larger reward later, I think you have to be able to do that. And I know that's something that like fitness people are really good at, right? Cause you're willing to not eat that Jets pizza, which is my favorite food, um, <laughs> which you know, I will like eat that Jets pizza because you want to make sure you, you, you know, you're staying in shape and re reaching your fitness goals. You're going to do that workout. So, you know, I see a lot of correlation to the, you know, the sacrifice part of it uh, in your guys's world. But um, I mean, in so many ways, whether, you know, it's the amount of hours you're going to put in or, you know, the amount of time you're spent to learn and understand your industry um, and, you know, what you're going to sacrifice currently, even if it's, you know, you know, unfortunately having fun with friends or unfortunately even, um, and I think it's important to balance this, but, and not spending as much time with your family as you'd want mm -hmm. to, but I think you have to, uh, if you want something, uh, big and bold, I think you have to sacrifice for it. So, um, that's one thing that I've, I've been pretty, uh, I've tried to discipline myself to, to make sure that that's kind of just what it takes and you just kind of get in a mindset that that that's what it is. So what are um, ways you get in that mindset? Like for instance, you have a fiance now. Yeah. Like how does that, and there's probably a lot of times where you're traveling. That's yeah. The time. I think it's just being really honest and just, you know, at least, you know, being honest with what your goals are and where you want to be. And you know, the people that support you will be along for that, for that ride a little bit. And I, you know, I think it's, you know, it struggles because you try not to be selfish uh, and you don't want to be selfish. But you know, I think at a certain time, if you're honest, then it's not really selfish because everyone knows kind of where you're at. Mm -hmm. You know, so I kind of I, I try to get uh, in that mindset and I just kind of overarching, you know, kind of growing up on a farm and my dad and uncle were just extremely hard workers. And, and so I just kind of saw that they didn't talk about it much. They didn't do it. They just 
they constantly just did it. So you just kind of like put yourself in that mindset a little bit. So, and I think the people around, you know, my mom was always real supportive of my dad and it was just kind of like a thing that just kind of became part of what your, what your normal is. Everyone has a different normal, right? Mm-hmm. So just, you kind of change what that normal is and then you adapt a little bit. I think, I think I was in seventh grade and the whole like town of Armada used to go to Gulf Shores, Alabama for spring break. Right. <laughs> and I'll never forget this. I remember being like, just watching this happen. Like, damn. So we're in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and it's like the best place to be as a kid. You don't want to be anywhere else. It's beach, it's girls, everything. We're like playing basketball every Water day, balloons. having fun. And I remember all of a sudden, I'm with Joey Zeppelin, and you guys had to leave, I think, two days early because something happened at the farm. Yeah. And I remember Mr. Zeppelin and like everyone telling me, like, yeah, they're just going. Like everyone just accepted it. Like I think your mom was like, yeah, we're packing up, we're going. Like that, I would have cried my <laughs> eyes out. of like, no, we're leaving. But everyone's just like on the same page. Got to do it. So talking about sacrifice, I mean, that's yeah. Right it's, there. Just, it's just kind of part. It's just kind of part of it. And Gulf Shores, man, I still that was that was a good time. <laughs> Talk all day about that one. <laughs> awesome, water, awesome. Water balloons off the top of. Oh the my gosh. Yes. <laughs> and jellyfish. Yeah. All right. What is one of the best or most worthwhile investments you've ever made? Could be an investment in money, time, energy. Um, I. Uh, I don't really do the financial investment thing well yet, although I'm trying to learn that a little bit more personally, but I got lucky with Bitcoin. I bought a Bitcoin at like, shut. I bought a Bitcoin, I bought a Bitcoin really early, like two years ago, one. Um, and it was just one, but <laughs> just it, one yeah, Bitcoin. just one Bitcoin. But <laughs> what'd you buy it for? But uh, I think it was like uh, $800. $800 yeah. and now it's worth. Yeah, I sold it. I sold it at, when wow. it was, yeah, when it was up to like, when it kind of hit its peak. So I got, I got lucky there. God, that. but, still, but, I can't remember. Yeah, the only Bitcoin person I've ever met that's actually yeah, bought. I bought a one. I bought one Bitcoin. Yeah, just one. Yeah, just one. And um, so I got super lucky with that, mostly because I have smart friends who are into that, and they kind of literally like, like hey, you should do this. When and did you like, buy it? Like a year and a half ago, maybe two. Because really? I think right now to buy one Bitcoin is what the price. Yeah, it's like it was at seventeen. I think it's like twelve grand wow. now. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so it's just right time, right place. Luckily, lucky to have smart friends. Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> so I got super lucky there. But um, the other investment is I think I, I've been starting to take a lot more uh, investment in, in in myself. I guess just mm-hmm. time, trying to work out, trying to uh, sauna, meditate, just trying to do things to keep uh, to keep my my myself up to a, at least a halfway optimal level to a, de- to a degree. You're um, here on a Friday. Yeah. To your ass beaten yeah. Tomorrow. I'm <laughs> excited, man. It'll be good. Oh shit. So I got to talk about that a little bit though, because like, I know a lot of people watching this, listening to this are, you know, they are very busy with their business and yeah. whatever they do. Like, how do you, f- do you find that like, you know, eating healthier, working out more, does that affect your productivity? productivity in a positive way or yeah so i get yeah so i get into um like i'm kind of like i think we talked about earlier a little bit of obsessive uh to a degree at least when it comes to work and things like that so um i always um so basically my trying to balance that is trying to like get away from work Mm -hmm. a little bit so um but i do notice when i do do that and i spend more time genuinely uh happier which is awesome um i have more energy when i wake up like i can tell when i'm just like when I, when I'm not working out, not doing any of these other things and taking time, I'll just, I'll work a ton. I'll run myself into the ground. I'll notice myself. I'll wake up late. I'll wake up tired. And you just kind of, you're not in that. Um, and you generally just get, I think a little bit more, uh, or at least I do a little bit more of a negative perspective on everything that you're doing. So, um, you know, so, so to keep it positive and to keep it there, I think, you know, getting a lot of sleep, you know, yeah, that's one thing I've been like, yeah. I've always had an easy time sleep. But I never really realized the importance of it. So like, Ooh, yeah. you know, making sure you, like you get uh, enough sleep, uh, make sure that you actually eat halfway healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've been doing the whole not eating till noon thing recently, which uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've been liking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but I definitely noticed just a general uh, better sense of well being when I, when I do those things. And, you know, as you get older, I think when you're younger, you can kind of like, it doesn't matter as much and you can kind of like block that out or it doesn't matter. Maybe you're just so young. I don't know. Full of energy. Yeah. It just doesn't matter. But as you get older, like it does affect you and you know, Mm -hmm. then it affects your work and your relationships. And so it's become more and more of an important part of my life to kind of try to keep some sort of balance with, with, with everything that goes on. Yeah. I mean, that's remarkable to hear because I cannot imagine how busy, I mean, you could work 24 hours a day if you want with this Blake's hard cider and how much you guys got going on. But, it, well, it's like, it's like a certain point, you're never going to get 
everything that you need to get done in a day. So you got to compartmentalize and, and kind of balance a little bit. Uh, and that's been, um, that's been something that's kind of a working work in progress, uh, too. That's what you're so, here for, man. Yeah, that's right. There, go. there we go. All right. So out of the next one, what's an unusual habit or, you know, absurd thing that you do? What's a weird thing about you? Anything. Uh, weird thing about me. Um, well, it's like reading about mushrooms.